order. So today, I would like to give some like uh, uh, principal information for the transport uh, in Thailand. I hope I can give some information for you. Uh, you know that Thailand have uh, lots of uh, fresh produce uh, for the export, like uh, durian, mangosteen, rambutan, longkeng, and also some vegetable like a sweet basil and uh, like a Chinese cabbage or something like that. And for all of the transportation in Thailand uh, through the principal procedure of a post service handling, like uh, you need, uh, you know that we start at the harvesting. It need the uh, what you call good quality uh, at the uh, harvesting and also grading, uh, sorting maybe by color by size or something like that for the uniformity of them. Um, packaging, storage before transportation. If you if you fresh if the fresh produce. Uh, cannot purchase or maybe go, might not be uh, directly go to the consumer. So you need uh, to store them and then transportation again. Uh, okay. Uh, for the harvesting, like for example, I think uh, Dr. Pilsak might have uh, might show you some principal procedure already. Harvesting by hand, harvesting, sorting or something like that. And also, after harvesting, it can be uh, like a simple, like a truck, like this, transport uh, the fresh produce to the packing house. You know, we still, this is for the export, long gang. Uh, we have a, a plastic bin, something like this, basket. And particularly for long gang, might need a special treatment. My... <laughs> I'm getting to wait already. Um, it needs a specific, uh, special treatment like uh, sulfur dioxide fumigation. But anyway, we have a quality control for the chemical residue as well before uh, transport them. And sorting, grading, and also this is uh, uh, one type of uh, packaging and loading of the long gang. Uh, uh, on the, uh, the bullet like this. Uh, this is the different type of the packaging for the export fruit. Uh, gawa, uh, rose apple, mango steen or something like that. Uh, again, the temperature for the fresh produce like uh, before transportation uh, you need maybe you need to store them before transportation. The temperature may uh, be between two to fifteen degrees Celsius, and depending on the commodity. For the long gang linji, uh, might be close to zero degrees Celsius, but others uh, maybe above ten degrees Celsius is better. So for the transportation, it's like uh, connecting between. A connecting link between producer and consumer. So it whole key factor in post harvest quality maintenance as well. Sorry, sorry. But the key issue that you need to be considered, like uh, you need to keep as cool as possible. One before, like for example, uh, after harvesting and before loading it and transportation. And also, you need to keep it dry and move to the market as quickly as possible. Uh, and, uh, for example, you have maybe have small uh, transport like this, go to packing house, store it, and transport them uh, for into the variety, maybe various market like a local market, wholesale market, and also for the export one. Different uh, vehicle, maybe like a truck, trailer, uh, train, broad, or cheap, or something like that. Mm. For the export one, if go to the European country, uh, mainly by air. But to the Asian country, it can be by air or sea or on by land or, or road, for example. This is different type of a vehicle. 
maybe like open vehicle, uh, refrigerator vehicle. In the picture, it's quite beautiful, you know, but in the real, the real vehicle, maybe it's not quite beautiful. This is mainly for, uh, uh, I mean, uh, for export as well, uh, both for national and international transportation as well. This is one example of uh, exported mangosteen to the Vietnam. We have the central market in Bangkok or nearby Bangkok. I think you will have a trip to visit this central market as well. Uh, we have a station point for the export fruit, like a central market, and then uh, sorting, grading them, and uh, okay, loading, and mainly manual loading, you know, and travel by truck like this. Uh, it might have also like a, you see, a top icing and uh, cover with some blanket and transport to Vietnam. It may take maybe two days to Vietnam. And uh, again, for example, in like uh, some uh, fresh produce transfer to the China. Uh, right now, we can have a different way uh, by land with a conventional truck. Uh, we have different, what you call, uh, route to uh, China, like uh, maybe this one, we are tree from Bangkok. From Bangkok, uh, this way, they have different way. From Bangkok, uh, go to Lao, Kunming, and China, something like this. Uh, at least uh, it takes four to five days for transportation. So that means the quality, you need to control them during transportation as well, control the quality, you know. And uh, also another route, like a 9-8, oh, uh, R-9, not 9-8, uh, route via, via route R-9, at least five days from uh, Thailand, Bangkok, uh, plus to Laos and go to China, something like this. This is mainly by land. And also another route, we have R-12 uh, from Bangkok, but and then pass through like a, Northeast of Thailand and across the border, uh, go to Laos, Vietnam, and China. This is another one, maybe take another five days again. Uh, that means, you know, at least we, we need to, what do you call, control or keep the fruit nearly five to seven days or eight days during transportation. So, in that condition, you need to control them as well, otherwise the quality will, uh, will be is not quite good after you reach the target. Okay, for the rain transport in Thailand, uh, mainly for like a local market, and uh, because it's quite, actually it's cheap, but it takes a long time and have no, what you call refrigerator, or no temperature control or something like that. So it's not an important one for us, for the fresh produce. But for the international transport by sea, okay, this is, uh, we, uh, what you call export, like a fresh uh, pineapple, durian, or man even mango by sea to like a China, Japan, or something like that, uh, which is, uh, it's quite cheap, but take a long time, at least eight days, you know. Uh, this is the, it's, it's quite a long time. Because if you need to spend a lot of, like a, a week during transportation, and then again, you need to have some more day for uh, shelf life, that means your fruit should have a storage life more than two weeks, you know. So in, in, this, in this case, you, we still need to what you call control uh, or find something to extend the storage life. Okay, for the air flight in Thailand, uh, normally for the European country, uh, fresh produce usually packed into the carton in different size, and some of them can uh, control uh, like uh, the tem temperature control and also atmosphere control as well. And also, uh, before 
uh, transportation, loading during uh, transfer the fresh produce into the the cargo or something like that. Uh, you need to what do you call careful about uh, during during transfer them. For example, this is uh, manual loading into the truck. You can see like uh, for the local market or traveling to the uh, central market as well, it's still not in a, what you call a proper way, but uh, they still uh, like a manual loading like this. And also this is uh, in the wholesale uh, market. You can have a small car uh, like this, a truck like this, and packaging is still not uh, uh, very good. But it's just okay. This is simple, simple, uh, simply manual loading. Also, uh, this is uh, okay. Something like this. You will see when you visit the central market. Hmm. So again, uh, it needs to be considered like a different uh, factor could affect the produce during transportation. Uh, Firstly, initial quality before loading and transportation. You need to keep it uh, and keep it cool. Uh, and also, particularly for the export one, uh, like a banana, durian, mango, tin, or even mango, uh, the ripening normally is often a little less mature than locally produced produce because uh, fresh produce still uh, need some time for transportation, you know. If you get, or if you harvest the ripening one, it might not suitable for the transportation. This is the initial quality that you need to be considered. And also, uh, during transportation, vibration, compression, and impact uh, may cause the physical damage to the produce that need to be careful when you handle uh, the fresh produce. Avoid compression. Do not overfill. Uh, use a very strong package and uh, do not compress the product. This is uh, like a different type of packaging that it can be, uh, it can be what you call uh, avoid compression and everything. Use the foam or something like that. And also like uh, during transportation, atmosphere like uh, I mean, the environmental, like uh, temperature, is uh, the most important factor that you need to be uh, considered because it uh, affecting, they affect the quality of the fresh produce. Uh, that can, uh, you know that the temperature, if uh, high temperature can increase the ethylene production, respiration, and also what you call uh, refer to the water loss, something like that. That means you need to keep the, the fresh produce as cool as possible during a long transportation as well. Uh, not only for the, for the temperature that you need to be controlled, uh, like a humidity and also atmosphere uh, need to be considered. The temperature monitoring is still important. Normally, uh, we use like a data locker or something like that, put into the package and, con and uh, check uh, or measure uh, the temperature during the transportation and make sure that the temperature control, uh, uh, you can manage the temperature. Uh, okay. Before loading, uh, pre-cooling might be necessary, like a forced air cooling, to reduce the heat that uh, may uh, that might come produce from the fresh product before loading, something like this, and also the temperature. If it uh, if produce may be keep or storage uh, under the low temperature, you might have uh, you might find the physical uh, physiological disorder like a chilling injury like this. You know, so you, you need to be considered or during the transportation under the temperature control as well. Uh, another factor like uh, humidity and water loss. Normally for the transportation, 
fresh food you uh, need maybe uh, 90 to 95 percentage of relative humidity, but during transportation it may might be uh, what you call very difficult to to keep it uh, moist like that. But it still need to control, otherwise the water loss will occur very high. Uh, maintain humidity, okay, something like this. We doesn't want it, and also. Uh, Again, when you you might have like a different variety of the fresh produce and mixed lot, it also need to be considered that which produce uh, or different a different type of the fresh produce have a varying requirement of temperature and humidity. So it's uh, it's the best to traveling one by one or for just particularly each uh, produce, but Maybe you cannot do something like that. That means you need to consider the fresh produce that uh, have a sensitivity of uh, sensitivity of the ethylene production as well. Or maybe you may need or you find some uh, what you call special uh, type of the plastic to control the atmosphere or something like that during the mixed loads. You see, you have to control. Uh, uh, air circulation and temperature control during the loading them, and uh, it's the quite difficult if you have a multiple stops and drop and uh, this is cold chill control that need to be considered along the way. In terms of uh, at atmospheric composition, like uh, uh, the level of uh, carbon dioxide, oxygen. Uh, along the way of transportation, so for, uh, fresh produce will uh, have respiration, right? And uh, carbon dioxide concentration will build up. That is, uh, you need to control that. And the way, for example, uh, the, the, the first on your left hand side is like a normal atmosphere. Normally, have a concentration of the carbon dioxide is about 0.03 percentage. Oxygen maybe 21 percentage, and build up after that with nitrogen, uh, maybe 75 percentage. But once, if you, it's better to what you call maybe use the typical type of plastic, or maybe you can control the atmosphere, decide the atmosphere. Uh, try to reduce the percentage of uh, carbon dioxide and also increase, or oh no, maybe a different way. Uh, not try to, try to control uh, not more than maybe more than 20% of carbon dioxide. That is not quite good. This is like uh, you modify the normal atmosphere to increase the carbon dioxide, maybe 4%, uh, reduce the oxygen to 2%, to and also nitrogen, 94%. Uh, uh, this is like a modified atmosphere during transportation or even storage as well. So in particular, concentration of uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen for each, for each commodity is quite, what do you call, uh, very depending on uh, each commodity. Uh, for example, in the black heart, this is like a physiological uh, disorder for the potato when you keep it uh, have that in the condition that very low on oxygen. So they get the injury, something like this. Or even in some produce that you have, uh, maybe the condition have very high concentrate of uh, carbon dioxide, that is can get injury also. And again, the same in uh, atmosphere that contain a very high concentration of ethylene. So they can uh, get damage. So in, in this condition, you need to, uh, to consider and try to control them. Uh, normally, the generated modified atmosphere uh, that for the body well, optimum for each commodity, it might like to have a airtight cold storage room, or maybe packaging in film wrap or bag, or maybe you uh, can use the polyethylene liner, or even the plastic cover or something like that to what you call to maintain 
the concentration of the atmosphere as much as possible. So different type of the plastic bag can be used. Uh, for example, this is like a normal atmosphere uh, with the longer storage or longer transportation, you know, or longer duration of transportation. So uh, they will build up the percentage of the carbon dioxide, which is the fresh produce doesn't, you will get, you know, the off flavor or something like that. But if you have the plastic bag, that can, what you call, uh, exchange or uh, have a permeability for the gas to pass through or go out, something like that, and uh, at the end get the equilibrium modified atmosphere packaging. That is, it should be uh, the, best, the best type of the plastic that you can get. Okay, something like this. So fresh produce can be uh, stored in uh, what you call a suitable condition and can have a strong life, really long, something like this. Okay, uh, specific plastic. Uh, also for the what you call design atmosphere or control atmosphere, uh, there is uh, some example that like, successful of using the uh, control atmosphere achievements like uh, uh, export avocado from Mexico to Japan, uh, blueberry from Chile to America, mango from Indonesia to Middle East, and papaya from Taiwan to Canada. Uh, no Thai, but actually, uh, firstly, uh, for durian, uh, we try, not, not me, but for the Department of Agricultural Organizer, they try to, what you call, uh, transport durian within the control atmosphere shipments, but that's that for the like uh, research, but still not in the trade market. But right now, I think I believe that uh, Dr. Pirsak have, uh, what you call, export the mango to the Japan with the control atmosphere shipments. I think this is one of the successful uh, of him, that is quite very good. That is one example for CA shipments. And again, uh, not oxygen, carbon dioxide, ethylene is very important in terms of they will destroy all the fresh produce. So you need to ventilate it. Ventilation like air circulation or something like this, or maybe use the, like uh, activated charcoal, bromide, ozone, or uh, potassium permanganate to absorb the level of ethylene in packaging like this. You can find like a small uh, bag and a potassium permanganate put inside and put into the uh, packaging something like this to absorb the concentration, to absorb the ethylene and the pronyl can be what you call have a uh, storage rife, storage. Okay, it can extend the storage life of them, and this is one way that you can maintain the level of ethylene uh, production. And also, uh, finally, come out with, uh, anyway, when you transfer them, you might have like a barcode for the trace back and uh, to ensure uh, the quality that can be acceptable. Uh, normally, you can, uh, uh, I think for the regulatory agency, we will have a trade back barcode or something like this. I think for, for the export one. And also even for the, I mean, for the local, for the supermarket in Thailand, we, we also can be uh, trade back where it come from, who produce them. We have a barcode like this. This is for the organic farm, uh, like for, uh, uh, Chinese cabbage, sweet barley, chili, or something like this. this is for the organic farming. We have a barcode like this, and also for the like a product, fresh produce from the uh, specific com uh, company, you can have uh, testability uh, for the vegetable. You can find uh, the very good quality, and also. Uh, once we have some problem, you can trace back and 
can find whatever the problem come from or something like that. This is one thing that you need to be considered. So finally, the system, uh, transport system for preserving quality during transport, you still need like uh, uh, produce should be kept at uh, optimum condition during transport. That refer to like a uh, temperature control and air circulation system or even the concentration of the ethylene as well. And again, right now, uh, even we have a uh, different type of transportation, but we still need the specific or develop the new technology uh, during transportation to extend the shape line of the fresh produce, particularly for the long uh, distance market. But we still need to uh, study on that. So, uh, thank you for your attention. I think it's been maybe just 30 minutes or 20 minutes for <laughs> 30 minutes. But before question, I have uh, some uh, figure, some image that you you will visit the Thai cargo. This one. And you will see most of the facility, uh, call room of something like this, a cargo being on to for the export, fresh produce. This is the several type of the fresh produce for transportation, uh, mainly for uh, the fruit, you know. It's still very difficult for the uh, uh, vegetable and also this is the uh, environmental outside, and another one. Uh, usually, once when the fresh produce come out, they will have like a station like this. Uh, the first one like a truck arrival, okay, loading something like that, and go to the the second station for waiting them. You know, you will you will see uh, all of this step. And also, you that we have, they will uh, immediately fresh cool, like pre-cooling, you know, to drop down the temperature of them. And after that, uh, if the the what you call fresh produce will not uh, transport them immediately, they will have the cold room or store room or something like that. And also, uh, finally, we will uh, transport by air. Okay, this is la. Uh, it may be very, very small one, but you will see the real one in Bangkok. Okay, waiting station, uh, P. Kuru. Okay, during uh, different type of variety also, you will see the loading and what you call this one, uh, packaging design and also uh, loading on politicization or something like this. And uh, okay, this is uh, in the cargo, uh, an uplift to the, what do you call, for the uh, ready uh, on on the air and ready for transportation and also the another time, school room, small room or something like this. And maybe I have another one, a little one, uh, during like a, uh, loading into the what you call uh, refrigerator uh, uh, truck. We have the what you call to temperature control and safety door or something like this. This is one thing that uh, uh, okay. Refer container or this one for both of these is like a port, uh, Kong Tei port or Bangkok port. This one, uh, you can transport the fresh produce uh, like a by ship, by the sea or something like this. Okay, this is one thing that I have uh, put it for you. Okay, all of this image, thank you for Pirisak <laughs> that he gave it to me. <laughs> I have to show you and you will see by yourself in the Bangkok. Okay, the time for question. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> I think I can have some information for you to see whatever in Thailand, like a uh, uh,
transportation, we still need to develop. Because in Thailand, particularly like a logistic management, uh, Thailand still not very good, you know. Have you seen the traffic jam and everything and like a, uh, what do you call, manage step for each step. Yeah, we still have a lot of problem. So, any question? <laughs> so you understand very well. Or maybe, okay, <laughs> I will see it by ourselves. Uh, I think I have some time. I might give uh, a little bit because, uh, you too. wait a minute, wait a minute. Just a little bit for for this one. Just a few after after have a break. Uh, because normally I have several section. I I, I should have several section and le lecture for all of you, but we had, don't have enough time. But maybe I take five minutes for this one. Uh, this I think power. PowerPoint printer out, we'll give it to you. Normally, already give, gave it to you uh, maybe la on Tuesday, right? Okay, you maybe just a brief flavor or something like that. Uh, and someone already, what you call, specialist on the sensory taste. <laughs> For the sensory attribute of food, that refer to the, uh, like uh, one of the, what you call, method to evaluate the quality. Okay, you like a testing, something like this. But uh, flavor is come from taste and aroma. You know, it's a combined sensation provide where the chemical compound that when you taste them, smell them or something like that from the fruit into the mouth. So the taste is the sensation uh, perceived in the mouth, more especially on the tongue like a sweet, you know, salty, bitter, sour. And again, uh, with the umami, that's another taste, which is we, you can perceive them. You can have a sensation of that. But in terms of uh, each sense that you uh, perceive, like a sweet, that refer to the sugar, uh, like a Normally, uh, from Sukkot, fructose, and glucose, I believe that after break, uh, one uh, student of the uh, of the uh, like a, maybe uh, they, they they will show how to what you call not not exactly using the HPLC to measure the sugar content. You know that they will show you uh, some some the way of doing that. And also the taste like a uh, sour, that's uh, acidity. It refers to citric acid, titanic, malic acid, which is in uh, on Tuesday that I show you how to uh, titrate them right. That is like a, by instrumental, based on, that is based on instrument. But we can taste it like a, like human just need as well. But again, bitter, uh, refer to the alkaloid compounds, like uh, for example, isocumarin, quinone, something like this, that refer to the bitter taste. Uh, umami uh, is like uh, amino acid. Uh, in terms of uh, glutamate, aspirate, something like this, that you can get umami taste. But salty, like ion, maybe sodium or calcium ion, that you can taste it. This is one uh, in the taste perception that you can get. But combined with the aroma, aroma is something that you smell. Odor is the sensation perceived when volatile compounds are snipped through your nose when you taste it, you know. You not only taste by the tongue, but one when you snip it, you can get aroma from that as well. That means why flavor is combined uh, between taste and smell, you know. So the taste, you see, taste and aroma are very closely linked. But if you doesn't want aroma, when you taste them, you can pitch your note like this, and you can get just only the taste. Maybe you try, okay. 
uh, if if I have time after break, uh, they will have like an exercise for the sensory taste a little bit. If we have time, uh, okay, that one you can try. That is the uh, volatile compound. It's a uh, small molecule which is uh, so variety of so many. Uh, the first thing that uh, scientists uh, will they found that uh, they, uh, in in the nature it might have nearly 2,000 different volatile compounds in the nature or in plants that you can uh, uh, find the direct what you call chemical compound of them. For each commodity, maybe have a specific uh, chemical compound and have a distinct smell. Like this, beta, I know something like this, it refers to floral, woody, sweet uh, uh, sensation. And this is like a different uh, volatile compound. Or even something like this, maybe, for example, uh, aroma of the strawberry is not just only one volatile compound, maybe 200 volatile compound, to but, but when you taste them, you get just only that's the sweet or that is the flavor of strawberry. It's not only one volatile compound, you know. That is something quite uh, uh, amazing as well. Okay, this is like a, uh, during what you call a growth, uh, plant will have like a, uh, in the respiration or uh, you have to what you call synthesize sugar, no, and uh, also uh, come up to what you call accumulation of the sugar and also produce uh, plus to the glycolysis and have a, a specific uh, volatile compound uh, to be flavor for each produce. So, okay, we have, uh, but also uh, volatile compound maybe you can base, or maybe they, they have found that there, is, there are some genes that involve in uh, particularly uh, fresh produce, like for example, a gene involved in tomato aroma formation. They call it, then they find, uh, maybe if someone really want to, what you call specific, have a research, research on the volatile compound, you can see the different or specific gene that might be expressed that volatile compound, something like this. Okay, that is maybe it go to very deep. Okay, how is the uh, aroma volatile uh, production regulated in fresh produce? Mainly by ethylene, you know. Uh, you may see some different one, the fruit still mature, but not ripening, you know have no flavor, right? But when the fruit get ripening, the tissue getting soft and the flavor still, you know, it uh, accumulate and you can get the flavor of the fruit. That means during that time, uh, uh, during the ripening uh, duration, uh, fruit produce the ethylene and the ethylene, that ethylene play an important role to ignite <laughs> to tickling the aroma formation during fruit ripening. That's why when the fruit uh, ripening, you get the good, very good flavor. And also another type of the, uh, what you call chemical uh, production have occurred also. And regulation of aroma, they have found that this is like why uh, ethylene, uh, the, the sim okay, the simple way to explain is this one is like a normal, fresh produce, they can have a flavor, a good flavor, and also ripening. But again, on this one, uh, they might have like a specific uh, enzyme, which is the, what you call, uh, um, anti-sense, uh, the specific enzyme that produce the ethylene, in, in that the ethylene biosynthesis, you know. They like uh, have a block, they f they try something to block the reaction or the action of that inside. Uh, that means the ethylene production will not occur. And then this fruit, okay, they might get ripening, but 
they don't have the flavor, you know. That means it can prove that ethylene would be a uh, main important role for tickling the flavor uh, formation. Uh, okay. Uh, there are several factors that can affect the sensation test, like a uh, pre-hardware factor, uh, heat, and also like that. Hmm. Processing can be uh, affect the flavor as well. Different uh, temperature during storage. Okay, store uh, the you see storage. Temperature during storage can uh, reduce the volatile compound during food ripening as well. Okay, temperature actually modify atmosphere storage. Uh, so for the freezer, like a, a more powerful freezer. So different variety, or uh, even to produce the what you call the good better one, they still need to be researched on. And uh, to understanding the physiology of each commodity is still what you call, we still have uh, less information like that. And particularly with the optimum flavor quality and also uh, harvest at the maximum potential to attain the maximum flavor quality that it needs to be what you call uh, practical for them as well. Okay, improve technique to slow down uh, metabolism when fruit already start to ripen and understanding aroma formation in non climatic fruit. In this one is quite a very, we have very less information about the non climatic fruit. I think you understand the difference between climatic and non climatic right? Have you, you still have, okay. We still have a very, very uh, particularly for the aroma formation in non climatic fruit. So that means if someone would like to have a, a research in this area, that might be one thing quite interesting, you know. Okay, uh, okay, thank you for the, this document I have got from uh, UC Davis in America. So okay, okay. For the sensory test, uh, okay, should be just a little bit. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Mm. Would you like to have a break now or? Too soon. <laughs> Maybe we just have a discussion or have some question. Thank you, sir, for your nice presentation. I want to just I want to know that you have we have seen so many test uh, instrument uh, lab facilities uh, presentation but I just want to know that uh, uh, in Thailand farmers are now what are doing they can practice those uh, facilities you mean or farmer not? in Thailand have used uh, or this information or not or you mean something like that? You I think uh, the real situation uh, in field. Uh, we. What doing? In terms of extension program or something like that. Extension. Yeah. Normally, normally for myself, I am not. Uh, go to the farmer very much. Normally, maybe we concern like an uh, exporter, you know, that this is something that uh, like a local farm or something like that, I mean, for us, uh, still n doesn't have much program for them. Because, you know what, post service, um, maybe like a one each, no I mean, particularly for the post service system, we might need, no, no, we might need, we need like a specific equipment, you know, and also they will increase the production cost. That That is very difficult for the farmer to, to follow us like that. But also we can have like a simple post-harvest procedure for them as well. And again, 
most of them doesn't want it. <laughs> they doesn't want to follow us. That is, is the main problem for us as well. Uh, but however, uh, like for exchange program, uh, the main thing that we concern, uh, uh, like a chemical residue, you know, in that one, uh, we need be like a t uh, what you call train them as well, and try to bring them into like a good agricultural practice. That is the easy one for us, but not exactly uh, for the whole post harvest system. You know, that we can like a train them like a for the uh, in 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 the good agricultural uh, production system for them. That mean after that during harvesting. The post survey procedure can can what you call can be managed with them as well. Like a, that's a simple one that we can do, you know. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Uh, what about uh, canning? Training. Canning, canning, canning proce procedure. Or canning. Uh, canning. Uh, Uh, for for us, no. I mean, for me, Peter Sack, no. We only fresh produce, not for processing product. But ac actually, we have like uh, another part of in the faculty as well, like a uh, food science and technology that they 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 do the training like that. Actually, in the school, we have a lot of program like uh, for the canning or even for like a. Uh, 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 in differing like uh, all the fresh produce, canning for the fresh produce, or even juice, tomato paste, also like uh, meat, and processing of the what you call fish as well, but in another department, not not for us, you know. And sorry for that, I will not have the what you call information for processing line. Mm. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, basically, I am interested about uh, uh, fruit fly. Uh, as you are also an entomologist, uh, how you control fruit fly uh, in different uh, uh, mango and other fruits? What do you what? want me to say about fruit fly? Fruit fly control. How you oh, control fruit the fly fruit fly? Control. Fruit fly control. Actually, I'm not the entomologist, but I can tell them that in Thailand, normally for the fruit fly, uh, you need to control exactly in the farm. And uh, we can use like a pheromone to attack the fruit fly. Pheromone, pheromone, specific pheromone. Yeah, attack something like that. That the first one and the sick. But 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 for me, I don't have the what you call the inf the picture or even the product or something like that. Because, uh, I'm not very sure you will you will meet. Uh, Dr. Udom Porn again or not, that he, he is the entomologist. Okay. Yeah. But the second is, uh, might be like, uh, I'm not quite sure in Thailand we have the mut mutant <laughs> for the female uh, fruit fly insect or not. That is the second one. But in Thailand, I'm not quite sure that, like uh, you try to... Excuse me, you control female uh, fruit fly, male fruit fly? Ma for the male, for the male. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I'm wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Something like that. But I'm, I'm still not sure. This, this, the second one in Thailand can, 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 can test something like that or not. But this is the, 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 the second way. But, and again, uh, because one, all the chemical, chemi uh, like a, a pesticide, we still cannot use a lot of them in the farm, right? Um, they will, um, I think the chilling storage in some house can, what do you call, can destroy or maybe can reduce a, a block or what do you call, to, what do you call, to, to uh, yeah, to kill the, to create the food fly. And the main one, uh, the last one, this is used in, for the export. We use the very poor. What do you know? 
w e r e poor water, um, stream, stream water. Yes, yeah, stream water. Hot one, hot one. Uh, mainly, particularly for mango export to the Japan, they require you should have the uh, wet pool pressure like this, like a stream one, before to yeah before export. This is exactly we have to do it. This is and right now we use this one, which is okay. You don't uh, different way, but uh, the first thing you need to control. The amount of the fruit fry in the farm, and the last one, the stream water. Okay, I hope I can answer your question. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, there is a growing trend about uh, drying of fruits and vegetables. A value value addition, value addition. Okay, again, please. Yeah. Value addition about value addition of fruits and vegetables. Nutrition. No, 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 no. Well, valuation of. Canning, drying, something. You want to know the method of processing? No, 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 no. There is a growing, growing trend in the world, drying of fruits and vegetables. If uh, you have a surplus fruit and vegetables, so you will not uh, catch the maximum price when you go into uh, drying uh, processing. Yes. You will get maximum uh, profit. Ah, uh, you mean the dry fruit? We so today, uh, world is focusing on uh, processing, agro-processing. Uh. But here in Thailand, only focus on fresh fruits and vegetables. Yes. But there is a. What about the dry one? You mean? Uh, process drying and. The the. For example, banana drying, mango um, drying, mango processing. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot, but. Uh, You know, for my department, I concern about uh, fresh uh, produce. <laughs> But we have a lot of. I think we should have the food side people here because uh, okay, I know that because we have a lot of uh, fresh produce in Thailand. But after that, we can dry them, we can process them. Yes, we have a lot. Yeah, we can. Ask, yeah, that is one thing that is very good. But but be still concerned about fresh produce. You know, you need to tell my <laughs> government. But however, uh, right now we have like. Uh, A very big agency like uh, CP, they have, uh, uh, but, but mainly they for the for the meat, you know. For the fresh produce, we still normally for the processing one, we we still doesn't have very big company for that. That is one one another good dry fruit, yes. Yeah. Particularly Indonesia, I think they know very much, yes. Oh yeah, um, we have, but not in a large amount, you know. Maybe because of the Thai people uh, love to eat uh, fresh produce. Oh, mm. uh, I mean we have, but in particular company. Normally, like uh, uh, okay, we have durian, we have banana, uh, also like uh, mango, even we have or even strawberry in the airport area, but not the what you call not very high proportion of the product in Thailand. You know, that is okay. Is the um, is a good thing to develop for the export one. Yeah, that mean. Yes, yes, I know. Actually, it's why, like a, a the like a value it will go up very high rather than the fresh produce, you know. Yeah, that one. Thing. <laughs> But for the fresh produce, you will get more nutrition, you know. <laughs> We concern about healthy. <laughs> But in in the other way, okay, we can increase like uh, increase the pie or add the value of the fresh produce in terms of the processing line or processing product. This is good. Yes. Uh huh. Ah, okay, that's good price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's very good thing. Hmm. For 
maybe next time I try to develop some new new yeah that's a new technology yeah idea is good <laughs> but if they very difficult we we still have a very good like a, a good technology to preserve the flavor of uh, fresh produce you know in like a dry uh, dehydrate a banana or strawberry which is still have very good flavor of them okay we have some Mm. Yes. Or oh, increase the price. Mm. Okay, okay. Okay, next time come back, we will dry durian. Dry <laughs> durian. Yeah. Actually, uh, I'm not sure. Have you visited uh, what you call Buddha temple near the hotel Wat Yai? They, they will have like a souvenir shop. Maybe at the back they have a lot of... That's that for a local market. <laughs> yeah, okay. Actually, we, we have a lot. Mm, okay. Any uh, question? Uh, After Beric. I yeah. uh, think you uh, can use durian byproduct to control fruit fly. In, in, in case of uh, uh, cucumber. Cucumber? Yes. Oh, for cucumber is uh, after uh, it eating uh, the non edible part of cu uh, durian uh, you keep in in uh, beside the cucumber uh, vegetables uh, the fruit fly will go uh, to the durian product uh, they will not uh, lay egg uh, to the uh, cucumber vegetables they eat uh, the byproduct and uh, the cucumber is free of fruit fly. In our country, we practice uh, oh. sus like that. Is that working? Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, I think uh, hot water treatment uh, may not control fruit fly mm. because fruit fly uh, lays egg inside the fruit uh, earlier when the fr fruit is soft or immature and after few uh, days uh, the leg hatch out uh, it may hatching uh, after harvesting also oh okay this is very simple one yeah you don't need chemical compound you need everything uh, yeah. yeah okay yeah, okay i think different country we have developed have your own method this is very good. Hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> they go out and yeah. have a break already, maybe. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we are uh, we are thinking about the export, but um, uh, in context of our country, um, that means uh, Thailand. Yes. Have, uh, one se one fruits grow in one season, but uh, the off season is not found. Have you have um, uh, any? Uh, cooling for long time, cooling system for long time preservation of this food that we can get the, those spores uh, in off season. Then we also um, increase the value. <laughs> you, I, yeah. Sorry, I still <laughs> cannot get your equation. You mean no. the program? I mean, or I mean you have um, any long time processing uh, plant in um, Thailand that. For the post harvest procedure or uh, after for post harvest me uh, for uh, um, vegetables fruits you have long time processing that um, I mean uh, six months or one year uh, storing storage uh, processing for in Thailand. Of season, yes, uh, n not me. Uh, Pirasak, he did for the mango, off season mango, and try to keep the longer storage. And he planned for the export one as well. Yes. Um, 
not now for me. Not be, because you know it's quite in Thailand like a, a small farm, and it's trying to quite difficult for each community. Like a, this city, maybe like a mango, and another one maybe pineapple, and and just small area for each one is still we still doesn't have like a center for storage them or have a long chain for the whole country, which is still very very difficult for us as well. Hmm. And and also it's quite difficult for the you know for the uh, government, but because if, if you have uh, to like a, a program something like that, you need a lot of uh, funding to to manage all of them, like uh, in terms of logistic system as well, like from the farmer and bring uh, the fruit into the center and so and also store it, them, uh, cleaning them, something like that. But for the Rojal project, we have like a small group, uh, particularly for the Rojal project, in uh, particularly the main area of the Rojal, Rojal project fund, something like that. We have like a... Uh, different variety of fresh produce and and uh, bring everything and they have the personal waste. Uh, uh, what, what you call? We have the personal waste system to to control the quality and arrange every fresh produce to the market as well. Just particularly uh, specific area, but not for the whole country. Yeah. Chorus, for uh, yes, we have in the. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good for you, but for us, no. You have the main story, right? Oh, that's good. Oh, for us, really small one and what do you call, a different area have their own what do you call specific area. That is very difficult for us. Okay, that's good. Another another thing for us to what you call try to. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, different variety. Yes. Yeah, in a tree we have two times. Yeah. You need to manage the what do you call season for them as well and maybe modification yes. Okay. I mean, normally for the main storage, actually we have for rice. rice. Yes. And corn and sweet potato, sweet, uh, uh, what do you call, sweet corn. But not many for like a mango, durian, no, not, not yet. Yeah, we have a lot, but <laughs> no storage room. Okay, I think it's time for... Would you like have to have a break now? Okay, uh, we will have a break for 15 minutes. Yes, normally how, how many? I don't know, 15 minutes. And then we will go to laboratory. Uh, yesterday, the one that you went to, can you remember? Yes, yeah, for the HPLC, something like that. Okay. And then if we have maybe 10 minutes after that for the uh, uh, looking through the instrument, we will have a small uh, sensory test, just a little bit. Okay. Ah, okay. Please have a break now. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope I can have some, I mean, give some information for you. Mm, okay. Thank you.